Almighty God says, The most fundamental requirement of man's belief in God is that he have an honest heart, and that he fully devote himself and truly obey. What is hardest for man is to provide his whole life in exchange for true belief, through which he can gain the entire truth and fulfill his duty as a creature of God. This is what is unattainable by those who fail, and it is even more unattainable by those who cannot find Christ. Because man is not good at wholly devoting himself to God. Because man is not willing to perform his duty to the Creator. Because man has seen the truth but avoids it and walks his own path. Because man always seeks by following the path of those who have failed. Because man always defies heaven. Thus, man always fails, is always taken in by Satan's trickery, and is ensnared in his own net. Duties are tasks entrusted to people by God. They are missions for people to complete. However, a duty is certainly not your own personally managed business, nor is it a counterweight to your standing out from the crowd. Some people use their duties as opportunities to engage in their own management, some to satisfy their desires, some to fill the voids they feel inside and some to satisfy their trust-to-luck mentality. Thinking that as long as they fulfill their duties, they will have a share in God's house and in the wonderful destination God arranges for man. Such attitudes about duty are incorrect. They disgust God and must be urgently resolved. Amen. 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 After reading this, I'd like to fellowship on my own experience. Of course. Yes, please. In 2017, my duty was writing for the church. The church leader arranged for Brother Lin to work with me and told me to help him along. I happily agreed and thought, I've heard Brother Lin is good at writing and he likes doing it. If he can get the principles quickly, our work will definitely be fruitful. The leader will think I'm capable and valuable. I should help him out. I gave Brother Lin the materials and principles I put together so he could get a handle on everything he needed as quickly as possible. When he hit a roadblock in his work, I helped him analyze his train of thought with examples. After a while, he understood some principles and what he wrote was clear and practical. Seeing his progress made me feel glad. He got a grasp on things so quickly. He had potential. Yes. Our team became much more efficient. After that, a lot was taken off my plate. I thought with more time to train Brother Lin, we'd get even better results. Right. One day, our leader said a church needed someone to guide their writing. And since we had Brother Lin, who was so good at his work, he would be transferred to that church to guide their writing. I was shocked and thought, what? Transferring him? You can't do that. I put so much effort into getting him familiar with the job and with the principles, and the work in our team started improving. If he's transferred now, our work will take a hit. What will people think of me? They might say I'm incompetent. I got more upset as I thought about it. The leader said, Once Brother Lin was gone, I'd train someone else. Yes. I was resistant to that. I thought, You say it like it's nothing. You think training someone's easy? It's so much work and time. Besides, with Brother Lin gone, all responsibility would be mine again. We're already busy, so with one less worker, our job will get harder. The more I thought about it, the more opposed I felt. The leader had me write an evaluation of Brother Lin. I thought, I'll focus on his weakness and corruption instead of the good. Then maybe he won't get transferred. I felt a little guilty when I was done writing his evaluation and wondered if I was being dishonest. Of course. Yes, of course. But then I figured, 
I was just thinking of the team's work. I turned it in to the leader. A few days went by without any response, and I started to worry, and I thought, maybe he didn't read the evaluation, and he's still going to transfer him. No way. I must do something. There must be a way to keep him on my team. I tried to feel it out and ask Brother Lin. What would you think if you were asked to take on the writing duty for another church? He said I'd submit to the church's arrangements. I would go. I quickly said, When doing writing work, we need to understand the principles and be capable. Without that, progress will be slowed down. I think it's best to continue doing your duty here. To my surprise, Brother Lin was not affected at all. He said with confidence, If given the chance, I'd give it a try. I hadn't achieved what I'd aimed for and felt a bit frustrated with him. One time, I saw a document he'd done had some problems, and I got mad and lectured him. Back then, whenever I thought about his transfer, I'd get flustered. I couldn't find any sense of calm in my work and couldn't focus. I had no sense of how to fix it. I felt tormented, like I was in a daze. I prayed to God and asked Him to help me know myself. Then I read these words from God. People often do not put the truth into practice. They often turn their backs on the truth, and they frequently live within a selfish and ignoble corrupt satanic disposition, protecting their pride, their reputation, their status, and their self-interests. They have not gained the truth. Thus, you are overly distressed, overly troubled, and overly fettered. What is the standard by which a person's deeds are evaluated as good or evil? It depends on whether or not you, in your thoughts, expressions, and actions, possess the testimony of putting the truth into practice and of living out the reality of truth. If you do not have this reality or do not live this out, then you are without a doubt an evildoer. How does God see evildoers? Your thoughts and external acts do not bear testimony to God, nor do they put Satan to shame or defeat Satan. Instead, they shame God and are riddled with marks that cause God to be ashamed. You are not testifying of God, not expending yourself for God, nor are you fulfilling your responsibility and obligations toward God. Instead, you are acting for your own sake. What is the implication of for your own sake? For Satan. Therefore, in the end, God will say, Depart from me, you that work iniquity. In God's eyes you have not done good deeds. Rather, your behavior has turned evil. You will not be rewarded. God will not remember you. Is this not completely in vain? Amen. Amen. I understood as I read God's words. God decides whether people are doing good, not by how much they expend themselves or suffer or sacrifice but by their motives, and if their actions are for God or themselves, and whether they practice truth. That's true. I reflected on my state and saw that my effort to help Brother Lin grasp the principles quickly wasn't for the church. I just thought he could make our team more efficient and make me look good. When I saw he would be transferred, I was afraid the team's work and my reputation and status would be harmed by his leaving so I highlighted his faults in the evaluation to mislead the leader. I even said some negative things to dampen his enthusiasm for duty. How was that practicing the truth and doing my duty? I did my duty selfishly, not considering the work of the church, only the work I was responsible for, and whether my status would be harmed. I had lied and hindered the church work. I was disrupting the work of God's house and opposing God. When I saw the dangerous state I was in, I prayed to God, Oh God, I've been so selfish. 
I've disrupted the work of God's house for my own interest. God, I wish to repent to you. Amen. Amen. I then read this in God's words. Don't always do things for your own sake. Don't always consider your own interests. And don't consider your own status, face, or reputation. Give no consideration to people's interests. You must first consider the interests of God's house and make that your first priority. You should be considerate of God's will. Start by contemplating whether or not you have been impure in your fulfilling of your duty, whether you have done your utmost to be loyal, complete your responsibilities, and given your all, and whether or not you have wholeheartedly given thought to your duty and the work of God's house. You need to think of these things. Consider these things frequently, and you will have an easy time performing your duty well. Amen. I found a path of practice within God's words. I needed right motives in my duty to accept God's scrutiny and uphold the work of God's house, not my interests. Brother Lin had good caliber and sought the truth. So if he worked in another church, that would benefit the work of God's house. Not to mention he'd get more practice that way, so I should support him. Right. I sought out the leader and opened up about my own selfish motives and gave a fair assessment of Brother Lin. He was transferred to the other church that needed him, and I finally felt some inner peace. Thanks, be, Thanks to be to God. That's what the truth does. That's right. During that whole time, I thought I had changed. I didn't think, in a similar situation, my selfish satanic nature would break out again. Winter of 2018. Brother Chen and I were team leaders. We complimented each other's shortcomings. And with God's guidance, we saw good results in our work. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I enjoyed working with Brother Chen a lot. After a gathering, the leader told me another team needed help, and they transfer Brother Chen. Brother Chen had good caliber, understood truth, and was responsible in his duty. So he was useful in moving our team's work forward. If he left and our work's quality went down... Wouldn't I look bad? Would the leader think I'm incompetent? I didn't want to lose Brother Chen. But for the church's work, I agreed. To my surprise, the leader then said there was another church in urgent need, and he wanted Sister Lou to help out. When I heard this, I was completely shocked. You want to take Sister Lou? Brother Chen's being transferred. Now Sister Lou, too? Two of our best team members will be gone, which will definitely make our work suffer. No way. You can't take Sister Lou. But then I thought, if I refuse him, won't he think I'm selfish? I suggested a sister who was less capable. The leader reviewed everything and still picked Sister Lou, and asked me to fellowship with her on her new duty. I said I'd do it, but I didn't want to. Later, I complained to a brother about the leader being inconsiderate of me and transferring these people. How was I supposed to do my work? I went on and on, but I realized what I was saying was wrong. I was just trying to get this brother on my own side. It was offensive to God. Yes. Yes. I felt worse the more I thought about it. I reflected on myself and prayed to God. After praying, I thought about why every time someone on my team was being transferred, I tried everything I could to stop it. What was the nature behind acting that way? I read these words of God. Duties are tasks entrusted to people by God. They are missions for people to complete. However, a duty is certainly not your own personally managed business, nor is it a counterweight to your standing out from the crowd. Some people use their duties as opportunities to engage in their own management, some to satisfy their desires. Such attitudes about duty are incorrect. They disgust God and must be urgently resolved. In the context of the work today, 
people will still do the same type of things that are represented by the words, the temple is greater than God. For example, people see fulfilling their duty as their job. They see bearing witness to God and battling the great red dragon as political movements in defense of human rights for democracy and freedom. They turn their duty to utilize their skills into careers, but they treat fearing God and shunning evil as nothing but a piece of religious doctrine to observe, and so on. Are not these behaviors essentially the same as the temple is greater than God? The difference is that 2,000 years ago, people were carrying out their personal business in the physical temple. But today, people carry out their personal business in intangible temples. Those people that value rules see rules as greater than God. Those people that love status see status as greater than God. Those that love their career see careers as greater than God. And so on. All their expressions lead me to say, People praise God as the greatest through their words, but in their eyes everything is greater than God. This is because as soon as people find an opportunity along their path of following God to display their own talents, or to carry out their own business or their own career, they distance themselves from God and throw themselves into their beloved career. As for what God has entrusted to them and His will, those things have long since been discarded. What is the difference between the state of these people and those who conducted their own business in the temple 2,000 years ago? So true. I gained more clarity on the essence of my actions with God's words. I was resistant and stood in the way every time the leader wanted to transfer someone because I treated my duty as my own personal career. I thought of those on my own team as people I'd trained, so they should do their duty within my scope, only within our own team, and not anybody else's. My way of thinking was unreasonable, absurd. Yes. Any strengths those brothers and sisters had were predetermined by God for His work, they should be put anywhere in God's house where they're needed. That's a given. Yes. Yes. But I was trying to keep them under my control. Treating them like tools for my own job, working for me. I didn't want anyone transferred away. I even tried to make clicks and make judgments. Wasn't I acting like the ancient Pharisees, opposing Lord Jesus? Back then... They saw the temple as their own sphere of influence and wouldn't allow believers to follow the Lord Jesus. They stopped at nothing to control believers, to preserve their own status, saying believers belong to them. And me? I kept brothers and sisters under my control, not letting them go. Wasn't I using my own sphere of influence to oppose God? By taking this path, I was resisting God. I offended His disposition. This thought was frightening. And I started to hate my own despicable and selfish ways. I prayed to God in repentance. Amen. I spoke with Sister Lou then about her transfer. And the brother I had deceived, fellowshipping on the nature of what I'd said, so he had discernment. I finally gained some peace. Thank, Thank God. God. After Sister Lu and Brother Chen were transferred, Sister Li joined our team. She was capable and learned quick. There was no delay in our team's work. Thanks, Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. I realized doing my duty for God's house, not my own purpose, is a way to be blessed. God will arrange the right people to uphold His work. Amen. Amen. Three months after that, Sister Lin came from a gathering and told me a nearby church was doing well with work and needed help with newcomers. The leader suggested Sister Lee go and give help in that church. I felt disgruntled again, but realized right away that my state was wrong. I thought about all the times I'd ignored the church's interests for my own status. I felt really bad and guilty. 
Then these words of God came to mind. A duty is not your own private affair, and by fulfilling it, you are not doing something for yourself or managing your own personal business. In God's house, no matter what you do, you are not working on your own enterprise. It is the work of God's house. It is God's work. You must constantly bear this knowledge in mind and say, This is not my own affair. I am doing my duty and fulfilling my responsibility. I am doing the work of God's house. This is a task God entrusted to me, and I am doing it for Him. This is not my own private affair. If you think it is your own private affair, and you do it in accordance with your own intentions, principles, and motives, then you are going to be in trouble. God's words made it clear to me. My duty is God's commission for me, not a personal enterprise. I can't just do what I want for my own personal interests. That's right. I should consider the interests of God's house and do what God requires. That's the only attitude a created being should have in their duty. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. I used to only think of myself, and I did things that damaged the interests of God's house. I could no longer live that way. I had to give up my own wants and practice truth. Amen. At this thought, I felt relief. I told Sister Lynn, this is all for the work of God's house. We should talk with Sister Lee about her change in duty. We can't impact the work of God's house. Amen. Thank God. In my duty, learning to let go of my own wants, thinking of God's house, having conscience and reason, and knowing my place, all came from the judgment and chastisement of God's words. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. What that a practical, practical lesson. It's really beneficial to us all.